All right, so today we're gonna to take a look at the new headphones from Bayer Dynamic, the DT700 Pro X and the DT900 Pro X. Now this review is gonna be mainly focused, pretty much 99% focused on gaming. How is it on gaming? We tested it on all gaming platforms, PS5, Series X, PC, Mac, all that good stuff right there. How do these guys perform in gaming? But first off, in your box, you're gonna get your headphone, whether you get the 700 or 900, being closed or open back. You can get a little headphone baggie because we all need a headphone baggie. You'll get a six foot cable and then a 10 foot cable as well. They are mini XLR cables, and then they go right into 3.5, or you have your adapter that can screw on right there for you. All right, so you all know where we have to start, right? We have to start with that comfort. Now I'm gonna be showing and probably using one of these headsets through a lot of the things we talk about in this video. But again, build, comfort, all that stuff is the exact same on all of them. Now, as far as comfort, both headsets, you have that mild movement right there. It's not like true swivel, it's just like a little budge. Your ear cups go in and out. Now, you do have that wire hanging right there. Nothing really to worry about. It doesn't really tense up or anything. Just don't catch it on anything, you know what I mean? You do have those metal forks going into the plastic cups and then into the plastic headband up there. As far as your ear cushions, they are velour, plenty big, nice and plush. Now the velour on the inside and outside, a little bit of padding, very mild amount right down there on the driver. Very breathable ear cushions though. And yes, you can pop them off, interchange them. Uh, you got that bracket underneath there so it's gonna be hard to flop on your own, but uh, you might have to get some from Bear Dynamic or once some companies start making some. And then they simply, I say simply as I struggle here, they just clip on once you find the grooves then it'll go right back into the place right there headband a little bit of plushness right there plenty fine again it covers whatever you want and you see this little tab down here you actually take the headband off by pulling on that tab and yanking up and then Again, that can come off. You can replace that or interchange it if you want. Now, since we got the headband off, you can see you got a little metal reinforcement in there. That is where your wires routed through as well. But again, the outer shell of the headband is plastic. That's also where your forks are going into right here. So yeah, you got the big metal forks like you've seen on previous Bear Dynamics, but it is going into plastic up here and then plastic on the ear cups. But it still does feel very, very solid. Even when I take it and I stretch it apart, I don't get worried one single bit with this headset. I just really do don't, not at all. Now let's go on and check the weight on both of these headphones here. On the close, we're getting 352 grams. Should be pretty much the exact same on the open, not too much off. 342, so 10 gram difference right there. But again, as far as both headphones, as far as that build and comfort, they're pretty much the exact same. When you put them on your head, again, this goes for both of them, right? I still get that Bayer Dynamic feel, right? It's been my one complaint with Bayer Dynamic headphones. You kind of get it with the HyperX or the Logitech G Pro X, stuff like that, you know what I mean? Ear or headphones with that mild just budge right there where you don't have that true swivel, for me, I get a little pressure up there. So you might be thinking, hey man, it's just because you wear glasses. Well, it's not. I tested it like that even though I can barely really see what's going on here, right? I still get that pressure up there. Now, of course, comfort's different for everybody. You might have a smaller head, a bigger head. You know what I mean? Different shape. I mean, there's so many different things to put into play right here, right? And that's what I think happens with Bayer Dynamics. And me, at least, with my head swooping back a little bit right here, I like my headsets or headphones to kind of wrap around and kind of just sink into my head, conform right there, right? But unfortunately, bare dynamics and stuff, they press up towards the top. And after a long session, I'd say at least an hour's worth of play, I started to feel it right there. And that got a little bit annoying. But again, take that as just me. I, I don't know, do I measure my head or something? I don't know, you can get a little, uh, visual right here, right? But again, the ear cushions and everything is fantastic on these, so maybe slap them on your head and you'll be able to judge them from there. Now, as far as using both headsets, again, they are simply plug and play by 3.5 on any single device. You do that little mini XLR cable that connects right into the bottom of the headset right there, or headphones. Anyways, it clips right in there, nice and snug. You gotta press this little button to Get it out, and again, it's in there nice and tight, but really cool that you have that interchangeable cable. All right, so let's get into the juicy topic right here. Let's talk about the sound on both of these headphones. And again, I tested them on multiple gaming platforms, Series X, PS5, P, uh, PC, also doing a lot of videos and music on my Mac right there. Again, you can plug them straight into 3.5. Now on PC, I did test them just straight 3.5, but I also tested them with my Zen stack. 
the Zen DAC and then the Zen Amp right there whenever I test on it. So we'll talk about both situations. As far as games, um, just recently dabbled with some Halo. What a blast. Call of Duty, of course. Forza Horizon 5 on a PS5 is Ratchet and Clank. So we kind of got to take that what it is right there. You know what I mean? But anyways, let's talk about that sound. These guys packing a frequency range of five to 40,000. Wow, were they open. Again, on every platform, you got that detail. Nothing was overdone. Now I'm gonna put them, here we go, guys. Let, let's start right here. If any of you watched any of my other videos or any of you are familiar with the 770s or I believe they're the 990s, you know, the open and closed ones, I was never a really big fan of these guys because the highs, now you all know, I used to love highs, especially when I play first person shooters talking about Halo. Call of Duty, right? You focus on those highs for those reloads, those footsteps, everything around the corner. These guys screeched in highs. Like they were, wow, they focused on highs. They really did. You know, and I've always stated, well, I'm an Audio Technic ATH M50X type of fan, right? Because it kind of reduces those highs a little bit and you still get that nice detailed sound. With these guys, I don't want to say they removed the highs. I feel like they just brought the back end just a bit, you know, the highs are not nearly as screechy, okay? That's the biggest thing I want you to take away from these guys is no, they are not as screechy as a 770s or 990s at all. And that's really good, for me at least. I really like that, you know what I mean? Especially for gaming, because you get that immersion, you still get that detail, right? Everything's going on right there, nothing real crazy. Now, going back to console, talking Xbox or PS5 or anything like that, Plugging these guys straight into the controller, they were uh, not as much as I would want them to be. Now, it's kind of hard to even say that, right? Me using the, the iFi stack over on PC. You go from that and you go to something else without that. It's kind of like, ah, eh, you know what I mean? It's So that's kind of hard. You know, that, it, did it sound good on console? Yes. Did you get the full potential out of it on console straight into the controller? No. Let me put it that way, all right? That's the best way because I can't say like, yo, buy this $500 thing over here or however much it is to get the full potential out of it. Of course, you can always make anything better, right? You know what I mean? But straight into console, I don't feel like you got the full potential out of these guys. Plugging into amp or DAC, amp and DAC right there. Wow. Holy smokes, they came to life and the sound was phenomenal on any game right there. Again, Halo, Call of Duty, Forza, everything was stinking fantastic across the sound. Now I wanna give you a quick example. Something that came very close as far as the sound of these guys were my Mezes. If any of you use these, I know it's not a real popular headphone out there, but if you ever use these, they sounded quite like that. Again, where I talk about audio Technic ATHM 50X, I wouldn't even put these in that class. Same with these guys, I put them in with a little bit more bass even then the audio technica is a little bit more of a warmer sound, right? Again, you're kind of catching a drift right here, right? They really settled the highs down. You still have the highs, okay? I'm going in circles now, but again, it's just, it performed great on every different thing. It's not that headphone that's for gaming that's good for just first person shooters or just good for racing games or just good for story games. I feel like it worked out great for everything. Kind of reminds me, brings me right back to the Epos headset we just recently covered. As far as the sound, guys, I can go on and on right here. It sounded great on every platform and then every game right there. Of course, if you want to really boost them up and get everything out of your headphones, of course, an amp and DAC is going to do that for you. All right, so one last thing I want to cover on sound here, guys, and I promise I'll wrap this up, right? But that is the open and closed back right here because a lot of you are probably asking about that, right? And I don't want to dive too deep in here because I got a video coming up talking about that for gaming headsets or headphones, open and closed back. You probably hear it all the time, right? A debate out there. Now, focusing on these headphones right here, open or closed back, I've tested a bunch out there, right? Open and closed back, different variations. Usually you can really catch that airiness or that openness or just a sound breathing out there, right? With these guys, it wasn't that drastic of a difference, believe it or not. Yeah, did the sound bleed out a little bit more than these guys? You got that environment coming in, you know what I mean? I would say it softened up the sound a little bit, if that's the right words right there, you know? But it wasn't a drastic amount, right? That's why I don't even want to focus on it much because it was, if you blindfolded me, I might be hard pressed to even tell the difference. It was that similar, you know what I mean? But yeah, there was a pinch, a mild difference between the open and closed back being again, a little bit more breathable. I wouldn't even say the detail, you know what I mean? My personal preference was the closed back because again, it was just in your face. All right, so let's go on and wrap up this review right here and talk about our conclusion. Now, both of these headphones come in at $300. Now, when we're talking about gaming, that's more on the higher end, right? But when we're talking about audiophile headphones, which is 
what they are, honestly, right? That's more or less right at that mid-tier right there. And they honestly do so much right. You're starting off with that comfort, personal preference. Like I stated, you got to put it on your head and that's going to be for you. Let, let me put it this way. If you ever used HyperX or the um, HyperX like clouds or alphas or the Logitech G Pros, that's the same kind of comfort you get there. So if you're fine with those, you're going to be fine with these, right? As far as the build, stinking fantastic. They really are. As far as the sound, wow, it did it. It's that one and done. Again, for anything, videos, which I forgot to touch on, music, fantastic as well. I also forgot to touch on. I was focusing on gaming, guys, sorry. And as far as gaming, again, it covered every single genre right there as far as gaming, you know, and music and all that. So I feel like it's that one and done. It's going to be great for everything right there. You know what I mean? And that's where the price comes around. Uh, a headphone, a higher end headphone type thing is not something I feel like I can sit here and recommend. I can just break it down and tell you guys about it, right? Because again, you get into that higher price range, it's going to have to be what you're looking for. I can tell you all day long, yo, it's built great. It sounds fantastic, but it has to be what you're looking for. And hopefully I answer some of those questions right here. I know I dove really deep into that sound, kind of danced around a little bit, but I want to give you some of those examples. So hopefully you can get a taste of what it will sound like before you dip that 300 bucks into it. You know what I mean? So again, sorry, it's kind of a little all over the place right there. You know, again, I just wanted to give you that vibe and that's where I can put it. Yes, it's stinking solid hands down, but hopefully I helped you out deciphering and picking apart those things that hopefully work out for you. But all in all, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this review. Again, hope I helped you out and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.